Hello everyone, welcome to the all new season of the World Challenge Club Educational Show. I am Elvis and I hope you like our new classroom. Our theme this week at the World Challenge Club is the future of energy. We all use energy, from powering up our television, to warming and cooking our food, to charging our mobile phones. This energy comes from a lot of different sources. And this week, we're going to be thinking about the energy that comes from the sun and the energy carried in the wind. We will start our investigations today by making and experimenting with an air thermometer, which you can use to measure heat energy. If you don't know about the World Challenge Club, it's a place to do fun and exciting experiments while learning new things. You can find out more online and sign up to submit scores for the competition at worldchallenge.club if you want to. To do the daily challenges, you only need to use things that you can find in your home. For example, card, paper, bottles, straws, and bits of string. Don't worry if anything sounds complicated. By the end of the show, you will know everything you need to know. Here at the World Challenge Club, we love seeing all your wonderful and inspiring creations. Let's take a moment to see what you have been sharing with us from last season in the gallery. Amazing! Some really great skills on show there. Remember, you can share the things you make from watching the show with us through WhatsApp or by email to me, Elvis at WorldChallenge.club. The World Challenge Club is all about helping you develop your skills and knowledge in science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM. What kind of things can skills in STEM help us with? Let's find out. Since prehistoric times, humans have survived and thrived by being able to think and solve problems. How can I find and cook my food? How do I stay safe and healthy? How can I keep warm? Our ability to solve problems like these and share our solutions and inventions with each other are abilities that every one of us has, including you. Over many thousands of years, humans have developed their skills at inventing, improving and fixing things till we reach where we are today and our world full of amazing machines, technologies and ways of connecting with each other. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We all know the story of the first human on the moon. Just over 50 years ago, many thousands of the brightest minds worked together to achieve that amazing dream. Now imagine the science, engineering and technology required to land a person on the moon. It must have been incredible. Now imagine holding a smartphone in your hand. Did you know there is more computing power, more memory and more capabilities in that small smartphone than in the whole of the rocket that went to the moon? That is the story of STEM. Always improving, always learning, always solving problems. One day, it could be you that could be building a space rocket, or designing a new smartphone, or perhaps developing new forms of renewable energy to help people and the planet. There is so much you can do with your STEM skills. Invent things, solve problems, or work with others to make people's lives better. One place you may go to after school to develop your skills and discover loads of new ideas is the university. 
Davina Thundi is a student studying a STEM subject and she is in her first year at the university. She's here today to share her story with us and to tell us all about her learning journey so far. So my name is Davina. I'm a first year aerospace engineering student at the University of Bristol in England. Well, aeronautical engineering is essentially the study of engineering regarding spacecraft and aircraft. So we essentially look at the aerodynamics and see how we can improve design and make aircraft, you know, just generally better than what we have already in the skies. So I became interested in aerospace engineering when I was about 10 and I went to an air show. I learned more about some other things that were going on relative to the field, which was at the time um, Bloodhound SSC, which was the land speed record car. And I basically realised that, you know, aerodynamics is not just in our planes in the sky, but it's also on the ground and how we can use that to develop cars, particularly later on when I learned about Formula One and learning about how aerodynamics and aerospace engineering is such a multi-application form of engineering. So before I started my course, which is predominantly an aircraft based course, I didn't know much about planes. I had a general understanding of them, but I didn't know the technicalities, I didn't know the history of planes, I didn't sit at the airport all day and watch planes fly over my head. So as long as I had my strong maths and physics background, I was pretty much set to go, which I didn't realise back then, but when I came to uni, I learnt that not everyone is at the same point, and they treat everyone that way. Essentially, they start from the beginning, and we all work together, and we gradually build up our knowledge. So even if you just have a general interest, but you don't think that you're particularly, you know, an expert, that's okay. As long as you know you have an interest and the fundamental maths and physics background that you need, then you're good to go. Some of the things I've learned about air is how similar it is to liquid because obviously both liquids and gases, they offer the same fluid properties whereby they both occupy the container that they're in. So they fill up the space wholly and evenly. Another thing I've learned about air is the properties it has. So it has a density, it has a temperature and how temperature can affect both its density and other properties such as volume. Well, air essentially, when it's heated, it affects its density. So if we imagine we've got an area of entirely cold air, and we heat up one little area of air, the molecules in that area will gain more kinetic energy and they'll spread out and expand. And then because this air is now expanded, it's now lighter, so it rises. If you like to make things, do experiments, and enjoy finding out how to make things work, there are many fascinating directions that you can follow. The university lets you study the things you enjoy doing most and that can lead to jobs and careers doing what you love. How exciting would that be? One thing that many people care about is energy. How can we generate more energy without more pollution? How can we avoid wasting energy? And how may we create energy in the future? Our theme this week is future energy. And after the break, we'll show you how to make a device to measure temperature, a thermometer, and use this to do some experiments to explore ways of saving heat energy. If you have not made a World Challenge Club notebook yet, you may want to find a piece of paper and a pen or pencil to keep some notes. If you're not yet a member of the World Challenge Club and you have a smartphone, you could sign up and be ready to start earning points to go towards certificates and prizes. I will see you soon. Have you got something that you have made for one of our challenges that you would like to share and see on the show? First, check with your parents and then send us a picture on WhatsApp along with your first name, school and country to plus 44744-096-3443 or by email to elvis at worldchallenge.club. We can't wait to see what you have made. Welcome back. Today's challenge at the World Challenge Club is to explore heat energy by making an air thermometer and using it to do some experiments. Let's find out a little more about thermometers and how they work. Is it too hot or too cold? Hmm. Can we go outside? Hmm. Our body and skin 
can sense temperatures and this ability helps us to keep safe. But if we want to be really sure what the temperature is today, we can use a thermometer. One of the first devices to measure temperature was invented by a famous Italian inventor and scientist called Galileo Galilei in the 16th century. In his device, glass globes would move up and down in a column of water with changing temperatures. But you could not work out what the temperature actually was using Galileo's thermoscope. When Santorio Santorio added a scale to the device in 1612, he had invented the first thermometer. Modern thermometers have electronic sensors or use special liquids that expand with heat. We can tell if someone is ill with a fever if the thermometer shows that they have a high temperature. Your challenge today is to make an air thermometer and use it to do some experiments. For this activity you will need some plastic bottles with caps, some thin clear straws or tubes, some wax from a candle or some glue to make a seal and some coloured water that you can see inside your tube. You could use tea or coffee or cola. For the experiments you will also need to find some hot and cold places to take your thermometer and some materials that you might use to keep things warm. So how does an air thermometer work? When the sun or a source of heat energy heats up the air trapped in a bottle, the air molecules inside begin to move about and push against the sides and each other. The higher temperature creates a higher pressure in the bottle. By adding some water and a tube to the bottle you can measure the change in air pressure inside caused by the heat energy. Make a hole in the cap that the tube or straw can just fit through. The tube needs to reach down into the coloured water and you need to make sure where the straw or tube goes through the cap that it has an airtight seal. You could use wax or glue. As the air molecules begin to warm up and move and push, they push down on the water which will then rise up inside the tube or straw. The higher it goes, the hotter the air inside is. If your thermoscope is working, we now need to add a scale to make it a thermometer. Find the coolest place that you can find. It may be in the shade or inside or perhaps near some plants or water. Wait for the water in the tube to stop moving. Then use a pen to mark on the straw or the bottle where the water rests. Now look around and find the warmest place. It might be outside in the sun. Wait a minute for the thermometer to stop changing and then make another mark on the straw for the warm location. You have now added a scale. You can add marks in between at the halfway and quarter points if you want. If your thermometer is not working, check that you do not have a leak. If the air can escape where the straw or tube goes through the cap, try and seal it again. Now it's time for an experiment. You will need a pencil and paper and your World Challenge Club notebook and a stopwatch. An app on a phone would do. Take your thermometer to the hottest place you found and let it heat up. Now start your stopwatch and move to the coldest place you found before. The water in your thermometer should start moving down. When it stops or reaches the cold line you marked before, stop the stopwatch. Keep a note of the time it took for your thermometer to cool down in your notebook. Now let's see if we can make that time longer. Go to the warm location and let your thermometer warm up. Wrap some material that you think will be a good insulator around it. You want to prevent the heat from escaping. Make sure you can remove your insulator quickly. Now start your stopwatch again, then carefully take your insulated thermometer to the cold location you found. After your stopwatch has counted to the time you recorded before in your notebook, remove your insulator and quickly check the temperature on your scale. Did the insulator stop it cooling down as quick? Jot down some of the things that you observed and learned in the experiment in your World Challenge Club notebook. Can you think of any other experiments you could do with your thermometer? 
or any ways to make it work better. Try them and keep some notes. You have seen how to make a simple thermometer from the things you might find at home. Small bottles, plastic tubes or straws, and colored water. Shada Master Mathematics is here to tell us more about the world of thermometers and how temperature scales work to tell us how hot or cold things are. You've all seen a thermometer, that's what it looks like. Thermo, all it means is heat, and meter is to measure. So we measure heat and we measure it in degrees, it's called centigrade. So we look at this here, degrees centigrade. This is a scale of the thermometer, it starts from zero and heats up all the way up to 60 degrees. That's centigrade C for short. If it heats up to say a whole unit like six, that's six. Well, we'll write six units here. And if it's a part of a unit, we'll write there. Okay, let's expand this. This six here is right up to there. Now, the holes are this bit here. That's one hole. And if you break this into smaller parts, those parts are called tenths, because there are ten of these parts. And it goes further up, one, two, three, tinier, tinier parts, that's three-tenths. So we write three-tenths as point three. so that's written right there, point three. Okay, now that you know how to do that, let's go into measuring or recording the heating process. What we do is find out how much things heat over time. Okay, so that's a stopwatch. We haven't started yet, and already it is at 6. So we'll start with second zero, and it's at 6 centigrades. Five seconds later, it goes up to, well, 8 degrees. And then five seconds after that, it goes up to, say, 10 degrees. Good, which is now it's at 15 seconds. It goes up to 15 degrees, right? And then when it's at 20, it goes up to... 25 degrees. When it's at 25, it goes up to, it stays the same, nothing happens. So, and then when it goes to 30 seconds, it is 40 degrees. And then when it goes to 35 seconds, it goes higher to 45. At 40 seconds, it goes up to 60 degrees. At 45 seconds, it goes up to 63 degrees. So we've got all the data here. We're going to graph this like this. The time is on the horizontal scale and the temperature is on the vertical scale. And we start the graphing process. Zero and six. Well, this is zero and six. Well, six is, six is here. And so it'll be right there. Six, zero and six. And then five and eight. Well, we know how to do that. 5 and 8 is there. And then you've got 10 and 10. That's right there. And then we've got 15 and 15 right there. And so on. So 20 and 25. And then 25 and 25, which is right there. And then 30 and 40, which is right there. And then that's 35 and 45. And then 40 and 60, which is here. And we have it. Now we join these dots, and it looks like this. That's the line that's showing you the heating process, as has been recorded based on this data. So notice, it's got this slope here. It's a slow slope, and the ball rolls slowly, and that's why I'd say the heating is slow heating. But when you go further up, if you place the ball here, look at this slope. This is very steep. The ball goes really fast. So we say that's a steep slope, and it's showing rapid heating. And this has no slope, so if you keep the ball there, it doesn't move anywhere. That means that heating hasn't changed. It remains unchanged. That's it. Now you have an idea how to make and use a thermometer. After the break, we'll meet Jazz in his lab to see how he has made and tested his thermometer. Have you got something that you have made for one of our challenges that you would like to share and see on the show? First, check with your parents and then send us a picture on WhatsApp along with your first name, school and country to plus 44744-096-3443 or by email to elvis at worldchallenge.club. We can't wait to see what you have made.
welcome back to the third segment of the World Challenge Club. Here is Jazz and his lab to show us how he tackled today's thermometer challenge. In the lab today, Jazz is making a thermometer to measure temperature. So the jar I'm using for my thermometer is a Tabasco sauce bottle. You also can use spice jars if you have those. But what I found with this Tabasco sauce is the nozzle is very tight and fits ideally with the straw I'll be using. The key to this is to make sure you've got an airtight seal when you are making the thermometer otherwise it won't work correctly. And using plasticine or modelling clay it works perfectly. We need to make sure we've got a liquid that we can see. You can use water, but water doesn't give you a good visual effect. So today I've got some tea bags, got ginger tea bag here, got mint tea bag here, a regular tea bag, got some beetroot and some orange squash. Make sure if you are using anything in the house, it's safe to drink and consume because you don't want to hurt yourself. So that's an important safety point from Jazz. Use liquids that are safe to consume. So I've filled the bottle up with my beetroot juice. What I'm going to do now is put the straw all the way down so it touches the bottom of the And bottom. the next thing you do is prime the straw before you seal it up. When Jazz primes his thermometer, he sucks up a little bit of the liquid before sealing it. Then so I've stuck some liquid up there and sealed it up with the plasticine so it's holding liquid now. Another thing you need to consider is the diameter of the straw you're using. On the three I made previously, I'm using different diameter straws and that will mean as the temperature rises, the rate of the liquid lifting up will be different. So we'll get some water and we'll test the thermometers. One, two, three. And there's nothing, nothing's really happening with liquids here at all. There's no movement you can see. It's staying where it is. So this could be at room temperature. Let's try the last one. One, two, three. And as you can see, the one with a thin diameter is moving very quickly. See it there? The other two aren't moving too well at the moment. You can see that Orange juice now is being to move. You can see the thin one's gone all the way to the top, we'll take it out, otherwise it'll overflow. Straw with a big diameter there is not moving at all. So is this water hot or cold? Think about that. Jazz has shown us that the diameter of the straw is important. Think about that when making your own thermometers. Once your thermometer is tested and working, you can begin experiments, finding those hot and cold places around your home or testing insulators to see if they can slow down the rate of cooling. So there you go, update your World Challenge Club notebook so you can fill in the score on the website and keep your thermometer for other experiments later this week. The thermometers that Jazz made worked really well. Did you see how he tried different straws and tubes and colored liquids to discover what worked best? Trying out ideas and improving them is key to solving problems and creating great things. If things don't work, Try to find out why and fix it. That is what the World Challenge Club is all about. Alright, so we are nearly at the end of our show and it's time to review everything you just learned before you go and have some fun making your own thermometers. Remember, there is a competition you can join too and there is a scorecard online to work out your score for each day's challenge. If you have a World Challenge Club notebook, you should write down the facts you learned and make sketches of your plans and designs. You can use this notebook as evidence in the competition. Keep a record of the number of times you measure when you test your insulators. You will need this to complete the scorecard. And take plenty of pictures and videos. You can send them to World Challenge Club via WhatsApp and you can see them in the gallery. If you haven't signed up to the World Challenge Club yet, here is how you can. If you want to see anything that was in the show again, go to www.worldchallenge.club. The World Challenge Club will work on any computer, tablet or smartphone that can connect to the internet. There are extra resources there too, so you can learn even more. 
The World Challenge Club is also a giant competition for hundreds of thousands of students from around the world. To take part in the competition, you'll need to sign up and become a member. You only need to register once, but you must check with a parent or teacher first before you sign up. If you're under 14 years of age, they will need to include their email address too. So go to www.worldchallenge.club and look out for the green register button on a challenge page. Just click it and follow the instructions. You'll be asked to find your school and join a team. When you've signed up, you'll be able to upload your best score for each day's challenge. So after the show, check out the club and get uploading your scores. We can't wait to see how you do on today's challenge. You have seen how to use the club website and hopefully you have everything you need to know to have a go at today's challenge. That is how to make and use a thermometer. Before you go, we need to say thank you to Rolls Royce and the Ove Ara Foundation and Amazon Web Services. These organizations have all helped to bring the World Challenge Club to you today. We also have to thank Shad at Charismath, who made a special lesson just for you to help you think more about today's challenge and how we measure temperature. So that's it. We all look forward to seeing the results of your tests and experiments online at worldchallenge.club. Have fun, and I'll see you soon for another challenge. <laughs>